I've got. Okay, so this is um, Jeff Minter, um, industry legend, playing his latest game, and this is, um, what's this called, Jeff? The name isn't finalised yet, but it's kind of Space Wars, Cross of Asteroids with extra Minotaurs. And there can never be enough Minotaurs in games, basically. Every, everybody loves a Minotaur. Exactly. So where, where did um, where did this idea come from then? I just decided that I wanted to... Oh, well, just, if, 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 if people like this, I'm going to make it an ongoing project to do new games, but in the style of old, uh, uh, of old hardware. So here I'm doing something obviously in the style of the VCS, but obviously there's more going on than there ever was on a real VCS. Yeah. But I figure a lot of people will find this familiar, they'll look at those old pastel coloured asteroids that will bring back some, some nice memories. But it's also a bit of an exercise for me as well in getting controls right. I mean, doing touchscreen controls is very different than joystick controls. And this is a bit of a learning experience for me. If I can get an Asteroids game working right on the touch screen, then I'm doing fairly well. And um, how long have you been working on it for so far? Uh, on this, on this game? Yeah. Uh, probably a week to ten days. And um, do, you, do you find it's a process on something like this? Is it more like the old days where the, de the development was like quick and fast and you could turn stuff around relatively quickly? Well, or? I mean, there, there is a lot of underlying development to this which, which took a long time. I mean, this is basically running on top of the Neon 2 engine. The Neon 2 engine is running, is now at a stage of parallel development between the PC and, and iOS. But to get there took months. But to actually build this game on top of that took a few days. And what we intend to do is, if it, so people like this idea of simple games that are, that are fun and in this kind of style, then, then we can develop these very quickly and I can put quite a lot of them out. So you, you're quite um, you're quite interested in the um, like the iOS and the iPhone and that as like a, as a platform for doing future games then? Oh definitely, yeah. I mean, a lot of people have got them. They're powerful, they I mean, this, this this works really well on iOS. So again, move your finger around to control where your ship goes, shoot all the asteroids as they appear. Basically, yeah. And um, and then obviously rescue the um monitors. The monitors, because everybody loves a monitor. But also, because, so this is VCS graphics, and um, on, on iOS it's easy to have multiple players as well, because you're only controlling with a single touch. You can have multiple players use, use the multi-touch control multiple entities, so there's, you can play, play up to four players on at once on the iPad. That's pretty pretty impressive. And we've we've built in some some goodies to, go to, to keep it with the VCS theme stuff like we've got the old tank. Oh yeah, brilliant! Everybody loves tanks. As well as they love minor tools. Tank, tank, yeah, tanks and minor tools. That's a potent combination. And you've got, got the old jets game. So yeah, th these are goodies that are built in there as well. And it even looks fantastic. Right? This kind of style of simple graphics is particularly, looks particularly nice, even on the tiny little iPhone. See, it's nice and bright and vibrant yep. on there, and it controls well, and it's easy to play. And because it's built on top of Neon 2, then if we wanted to get a bit more exaggerated with the effects, we could do at the moment. I'm just using it to put a bit of a, of a trail on everything. You see, there's a little blue ghosting on the, all the asteroids. So, where, where do um, where do the ideas for your games come from? You know, you, you, so just, was this just a case of, oh, you know, I'm fancy making an asteroid clone? No, it's not really an asteroid clone. It was, like, it was like the idea was like, what would happen if you mashed up Space War and asteroids? Right. Space War is one of the most ancient classics there is. And you can play this in full-on Space War mode where you turn off the asteroids and it's up to four players trying to shoot each other with spaceships and shoot around the sun. But it's going, you know, I thought... Why not try mashing this stuff up? I like mashups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like doing what if. Uh, at some point, I can do like what if. Robotron on the VCS, for example, or Llamatron on the yep. VCS. I want to do this. In, in but you're you're obviously a big fan of the um, shoot 'em up genre, then, because a lot. Yeah. And you know what what is it you like about um, that that particular genre? I mean, for me, um, the reason that I love it so much is it it feels like gaming distilled to its purest form. 
because it's like basically you've got you got a, um, it's just you against against the game and it's all about your reactions and because a lot of people say oh it's just a memory test now but I, don't, I just think it's really like well, you I, just I, get down to the nitty gritty I, and I, I just I think real shoot ups are not a memory test anyway like, no no like, no not at all I totally agree with you based on, on random start positions you're given certain tools in which to deal with the challenge and it's it's up to you to decide instantaneously how to use the tools to deal with that challenge. No two levels of Robotron are the same. Yeah. You have to look at that situation straight away, decide where you're going to go, what you're going to do, what you're going to go for. It puts you in a spot where you have to make a lot of instantaneous decisions and then back it up with a lot of dexterous joystick activity or whatever. Um, I mean, another reason I like shoot ups is they, they just, I like the way they flow, I like, I mean, I like the, the kind of more abstract stuff, as you see, where, where when you're shooting stuff, it's almost like fireworks going off. Yeah. I like that that aspect of it. It's like an interactive light show, really. I mean, I'm not really feeling any aggression towards anything when I'm playing a shoot up. I'm taking part in some kind of, of choreography. So with um with obviously um now you're moving over to iOS. Does this mean that we won't be getting like um Grid Runner on Xbox Live Arcade or? I think we're pretty much done with Xbox Live Arcade at this point. So, so again, how did you? Um, I mean, you must have been gutted with obviously the way Space Giraffe was, because I mean, Retro Gamer gave it ninety-eight percent. I think it's a fantastic game, and no, yeah, no, it, no. it just didn't seem to get the support it, no, I mean, it but deserved. I, 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 I wasn't gutted by by the way it was received by by most people. I was only gutted by the fact that the certain actions which seemed calculated to help destroy its sales, its, its potential. It, it remains one of the best games I've ever done. And I just think it was very unfair to have somebody put the boot in before it even came out. And um, was this the, this was the American publication, wasn't it? As opposed to... Yeah, even though the, the UK one pretty much followed the same line, but not quite as badly. But even so, I remember going on the internet, the first I heard about it, I was going on the internet, I'd been in a couple of groups where I'd been talking about the game that's going to be coming out. And, um, I saw somebody say they'd seen this review, uh, it was bad, and then, and then somebody else saying, oh, you know, damn, I was really looking forward to that game, I thought it was going to be good. And then, you know, these people were taking yeah. this word as gospel before yeah. they'd seen the damn thing, before it came out. That was what upset me. If it been a month later, it wouldn't have been so bad. Yeah, and the thing is as well, is it was perfectly priced. I mean, the price point was really, really good. It's not like... How are you finding now where pretty much they want to make you pay £10 for everything that yeah, comes I mean, out? I tried to be as fair as possible. I, I understood that it was probably going to be a device to go. Yeah, it was its own thing. It had its own particular thing of trying to uh, of making the, 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 the psychedelia part of the gameplay, making that part of the difficulty. I knew not everybody would like that. Yeah. But I thought it was, it was grossly unfair just to basically say it had no merit, even though we, were, we had it at a knockdown price. It wasn't as if. It wasn't as if going to lose a lot even if you gave it a try and you didn't like it and the people who did like it absolutely loved it and I remain proud of it it's probably the best game that I've made I'll stand by that now so 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 basically I guess something like this gives you a lot more control over everything about the game you can decide when it's coming out you can decide exactly what it's going to do yeah I don't, I, want, I don't want everyone to release on a platform where there's the official X magazine waiting to stand there and yeah. kick your teeth in I mean, no never again so you just want your games to speak for themselves at the end of the day? Yeah, and I want to be able to release them you know, on my own terms. Working on the PC, and, okay, you don't, you're not precisely on your own terms with iOS, but it's only a, a case of don't build porn into it, anything like that. Yeah. I'm quite happy to fit in with those rules. I don't think anybody at Apple is going to turn around and say they don't like the design. So you, you've not even considered like sneaking like Minotaur porn in there? or? <laughs> Have you ever found any Minotaur? <laughs> <laughs> well, she... I'll be looking for both parts. But um, what do you think about the actual? Um, how have you found the, the um, actual event today? That's been really how this was going to be received because it's so it's so simple. Yeah. I thought some people might just look at it and go, "Well, it's just a VCS game." But actually, the response has been really positive. A lot of people are really looking forward to it. They like how it looks on iOS. They think it controls well. Uh, they think you know, the, uh, the price is going to be, it's going to be a, well, probably a quid or so, it's, it's, yeah. it's worth doing. And I, I hope it does do well, because if it does, then I'll get to a point where I can 
actually have fun again by Fridays. Yeah. Doing simple little games I can produce the few weeks that are still good to play, sell them cheaply and have, have a laugh. That's well obviously when it is out let us know because we'll, we're more than happy to review it. Yeah, so. I mean, hopefully it'll be soon. We, the only thing left to do really is sound effects and high score tables. Uh, we'll probably have, we want to try and set it up so it uses the Apple game centre stuff. Um, in truth, that will probably take longer to set that up than it did to write the game. Right. But once that's done, this will have a core framework. I yeah, and again, I guess it helps as well because, you know, it's just something that obviously Apple are pushing, a lot more people will be aware of it, so... Yeah, and it's, you know, but once we've got one simple game through the whole process of uh, getting it through Apple, getting it through the um, approval process, getting it onto the App Store, that gives us the framework that we can then use much more easily to get more stuff out even more quickly. No, that does sound really, well, really yeah, true. I'd, I'd like to be doing sort of you know, 10, 20 games a year like this, really. It'd be good fun. I mean, that, to me, that was part of the pleasure of the old days, was the projects were short, you could move from one to the other fairly quickly. Well, yeah, it's quite interesting, because obviously we, we do speak to a lot of people, because of obviously on the mag, and, you know, they do say that, you know, nowadays, you, you're not necessarily making games because you love making games, because sometimes you just can't afford to do that, and... Um, quite a few people have said that the iPhone does like you know it does feel like the old days yeah, where yeah, yeah. And, and you know bedroom coders and and especially if, if, if you do spend the year and a half pouring your heart and soul into something, into something and then it just you know you end up getting a kick in the teeth for it. I mean it's that came very close to destroying me as a person, destroying Microsoft as a company. And I don't want that to happen anymore. We've got smaller projects that. I'm not so emotionally and financially involved. With. Yeah, well, no, that's that's totally understandable. But it's like you said, though, you know, at the end of the day, when you do put that much effort into something, you know, I only make a magazine, but I know how hard it is to, to do something within a time frame. And they, when you know, when people just don't get what you're trying to do, yeah, it's not that they don't get it. They turn around and almost accuse you of being some kind of rip-off merch. Like, how dare you try and, and voice this game? I was just like really, oh uh, yeah, deeply upsetting. Deeply upsetting. I'm not sure I'll ever forgive that. So I mean, well, so did I have my turn this off?